Uh, good morning. You look tired, all of you. That's the disadvantage of being the last speaker for the session. Uh, but take courage. You're only half an hour away from your coffee break. And I'll try and be as fast as I can, trying to cover 30 years of carway work. <laughs> I will not dwell too much. Uh, I think you've all been to school, so you'll be able to read my slides. So I'm not going to read my slides. I'll only point out the important things that I need you to know. I think you all know, you've heard a lot about epilepsy, so I'm not going to talk a lot about the social issues, the negative social impact of epilepsy. Kenya is no different from the world and, and Africa. So uh, we have almost about 800,000 people with epilepsy going by our 18.2 per, per thousand prevalence. So, uh, and I, I suspect there are even more than that. Um, the association was founded in 1982 by a parent of a child with epilepsy. 82 now is we are 30 years down the line. And uh, she had a child with epilepsy and at that t time, well, it hasn't changed much, she could not find any help for her child uh, with drugs or anything, and she wanted to assist uh, the, the uh, needy children with epilepsy. And then she invited me. i just come back from my training in pediatric neurology, and uh, so I was the only neuro pediatric neurologist in this country at that time, so I was invited to, and, and I was one of the founder members of the board of directors, and I'm the only survivor of the old board of directors uh, at that time. So I in initiated the first clinic at Matari Valley, which is a slum area of Kenya in Nairobi. But we have grown since then. Our founder left the country about 15 years ago, and we have uh, continued her work. and. Uh, we have a fantastic, very active board who, who continues to do that work. Um, this is the sort of uh, structure of our, our function of Carway. We have board of directors who are all volunteers. So some of them are all here. One is in front of me here. And then we have employed people, four employed people. I'll show you some pictures of uh, our board members. You may recognize them in the crowd. And uh, these smart ladies are our staff. And uh, the vision, mission, goal is more or less similar to uh, what has been said before. And, uh, but I think many people are just talking about the vision, mission, and goals. But we in Kawe have been able to achieve most of our visions and goals. But of course, we cannot solve the problem yet. We don't have all the resources. And what we have done is that we have three programs. We have a, an important program of education, awareness, training. Then we have a medical program, and we also do lobbying and advocacy. And uh, in training, we train all cadres of health uh, personnel which starts from doctors right down to the health workers at the grassroots. And uh, we also do the education and awareness creation and trying to empower various groups of people and communities and the families and to understand epilepsy so that they don't fear epilepsy. And, uh, and this is done through uh, addressing uh, groups of people, whether they are in churches, schools, and surprising enough, sometimes at funerals. You know, funerals, you get very large gatherings. So besides the politicians taking advantage of funerals, uh, promoting themselves, I mean, this is a, a good opportunity sometimes to talk to people about epilepsy. Well, you may not like it, but you'll be surprised how effective it is. And uh, we have produced a lot of uh, training videos, and these are in Swahili and in English. And uh, some of these are our training uh, videos. Some of these are our publications. 
And if you look at, uh, we have uh, pamphlets, we have flyers, we have booklets, we have booklets for parents, we have also training manuals for uh, health uh, clinical officers and uh, health providers. And we also have one, uh, if I, this pointer works, this one. This has been adopted by the global campaign of, for epilepsy. So we're quite proud of that. And it is uh, currently under revision. And Helen Cross, the professor, is here, who I think is leading the process of uh, revising that. So we have done pretty, pretty, uh, quite a lot of work. That is, of course, when funds are available. So we, as you are just going to see some pictures, so it's not too much heavy reading. There are some nice pictures to look at. So this is a group of school children we've been training and other groups, wherever we can get. Some of them are clinical officers, some of them are nurses. And while those who achieve, uh, uh, after our three-day course, we give them a certificate. So we, we give a course of three days. So when, when we have the funding, usually we have funding, so when we train these clinical officers and health officers and nurses and uh, grassroots cl clinical people, we keep them for three days. So, from for all those three days, they're not allowed to think of anything else but epilepsy. From breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's all they do. So, they wake up in the morning, nothing but epilepsy. I can assure you, these people, when they come out, they know more about epilepsy than any medical graduate. And so, this, by empowering these people with this knowledge, right at the grassroots, we expect them to at least give better care to people with epilepsy. So with the basic minimum drugs, you don't need any fancy drugs for this. So, so the medical provision now, we run three clinics uh, within Nairobi. Previously we had about 15 clinics, but now at the moment we have about 14, uh, 4,000 patients who are still attending our clinics. And uh, we, we buy drugs, generic drugs, which are quite uh, affordable and uh, we sometimes uh, sponsor some of our pro poor patients and we do counseling of the families and this is one of our medical officers who's uh, talking to patients and this is uh, Dr. Romy Grammaticus she's also one of our directors running her clinic at Karen and uh, these are our patients waiting at the clinics I told you it's not heavy stuff just to look at pictures I hope they are projecting well, those pictures. Now, this stuff is important. For those who are interested in understanding our work, we tried, we've done this analysis before, and we are getting similar results. This is, we did an analysis for five months again recently, which is January to May, and please try and look at the, I hope it's, you can read them. The, this is about the drugs that we use. Most of our patients are on phenytoin, almost 50%. The others are on phenobarb, valproate, and carbamazepine. And uh, as you know, that this is 84% uh, of our patients are on monotherapy, and they're well controlled. Only 15% are on two drugs. Only 1% are on three drugs. So majority are on phenytoin and carbamazepine and of course phenobarbital. We don't use any other, other drug besides this. Occasionally we use for those patients who have come from outside clinics and we need to continue them or before we can wean them off. Most of these drugs that we buy are generics. And this is an important information that we have been able to uh, uh, achieve at our clinics. And this is a bit of a busy slide, but this is, this is some of the costing. The cost is not very expensive. Okay, we do charge the patients, but if you look at the commercial values of these drugs in the market, uh, oh, pressing the wrong ones, okay. No? Yes, that's right, yeah. Uh, now these are generics. Now two shillings is very little money. One shilling, two shillings, three shillings. By now you are familiar with our currency. 
Okay, and and the market values are, are almost three times the value of our drugs that we sell. We get epilim uh, from Sanofi uh, access to medicines at much cheaper price even than even the generic. This is a generic from India. And the price in the market is four times that much, and even higher, depending on which pharmacy you go to. So what it means is that we can still treat epilepsy at quite a, a reasonable rate. The consumption of drugs, as you can see, these are just figures to show you how much, uh, what kind of drugs are being consumed in our clinics. And we spend about two million shillings on drugs. But this is more or less the m drugs that we use. Very few patients are on these drugs, which are of course expensive, but majority of the patients are on these drugs, as I showed you on the pie chart. And uh, besides doing clinics, now clinics are helpful. Uh, although they are expensive to run, uh, we do cost sharing with the patients, we charge them a little bit of money. But please don't, rem don't forget that we are doing charity work as an, as an NGO. And 40% of our patients are treated free. They are not charged. If they can't afford to buy even these cheap drugs from us, we give them free treatment. So it can be done. So besides medical, of course, we focus on training. If you empower people right at the grassroots, okay, training neurologists, those ideals, I think, will not be reached within our lifetime. Enough neurologists to treat epilepsy, but you have to empower people to treat epilepsy. Uh, these are now some figures for you to understand how much work we have done just in this year, last year. In 2011, we, we uh, trained 100 pers medical personnel with those three-day workshops. 62 were, were now retrained. I mean, they are updated. And then 150 community workers, 148 local teachers were trained about epilepsy. Awareness creation. This is about creation of awareness. Again, you can read the kind of figures that we have achieved. And these are not mean figures. These are very impressive figures. 10,000 people. And we have had so many sessions. We have trained about uh, awareness. It was done to about 8,000 people. And through uh, our mass media, we, through from the information we got from the mass media people, we reached almost a million people. And then we have distributed materials. The, this is just 2011. And we have reached about 800,000 people with little, little uh, small reading material of information about epilepsy. Now, please remember that uh, Kawe, and uh, I, I stand to be corrected, is the oldest and the largest epilepsy organization in sub-Saharan Africa. I don't think there's anyone, in, to my knowledge, who has started epilepsy work from 82, 30 years ago, and as much work as we do, nobody has ever done that. At least I, I, I said, I stand to be corrected. Yeah, so this is 211, 2011. Uh, we had about 12,500 uh, uh, patients registered, 4,000 are active, we have done about 6,000 consultations. The rest of the figures you can look at, right? Now this is again, we do some special education support. We support some of our patients in schools when funds are available through uh, funding agencies. So at least they're not lost totally. And these are our achievements to date. Uh, well, not to date because in the past, we never used to keep any records, but since we started keeping some records, sensible records, these are the kind of things we have done. And uh, firstly, the Minister of Health has recognized us. Previously, they used to ignore us, but now at least they know that we, we, are, we are helping them in their work. And, and they respect us. And they send the people for training to us, which is a big plus for us. Our training sessions are usually uh, held in different uh, communities outside Nairobi, 
And the ministry is the one that sponsors these students to come and attend our sessions. And the, as you can see now, the figures are there. We have, have trained about 2,500 community health workers. We have trained about 1,364 medical personnel of different cadres just over the last nine years or 10 years. And we have facilitated opening of 15 clinics which we support with our expertise. Of course, we cannot run them. We don't have enough staff for that. And we have also facilitated the formation of uh, community-based organizations whose major function is to create awareness and support clinic activities. And uh, we are also supporting the, our old clinics that we have devolved from, 11 of them. This uh, map will show you in the past, in our heydays, when we had enough funding, uh, we had about 12 clinics around the country. We used to run clinics all over. At that stage in our time, we, we had about 50,000 patients under our care. But unfortunately, funding does not allow us to continue such work. And also, we have changed our focus. More from, instead of just providing clinical care, which I think the government should take over, we have devolved these clinics and send them to the nearest health facility, either in the government or in the mission hospitals. And then, but what we are doing is we are still supporting these clinics and with expertise and with drugs, cheap uh, drugs that we can acquire. And uh, uh, I wish we could do more, but of course, we now consider on training. I think the gain out of training is much more in the wider cause of helping people with epilepsy. The challenges are similar to any, any, any country in Africa. So I do not want to dwell on that. Drug supplies is another big issue. Uh, now this success could not have been achieved if we do not have support from uh, uh, our well-wishers. And these are just a list of our partners. And I thank Jane, Jane for helping me prepare these slides. And I thank you very much. <laughs>